The Lord led her and taught her and kept her as the apple of his eye. Like an eagle spreading its wings, he took her up and bore her on his shoulders. The Lord alone was her guide. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Therese of Lisieux, the little flower, a doctor of the church, and French nun who lived just over a hundred years ago. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who open your kingdom to those who are humble and to little ones, lead us to follow trustingly in the little way of St. Therese, so that through her intercession we may see your eternal glory revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. During the Babylonian captivity, the exiles prayed, Justice is with the Lord our God, and we today are flushed with shame. We men of Judah and citizens of Jerusalem, that we, with our kings and rulers, and priests and prophets, and with our ancestors, have sinned in the Lord's sight and disobeyed him. We have neither heeded the voice of the Lord our God, nor followed the precepts which the Lord set before us. From the time the Lord led our ancestors out of the land of Egypt until the present day, we have been disobedient to the Lord our God and only too ready to disregard his voice. And the evils and the curse that the Lord enjoined upon Moses his servant at the time he led our ancestors forth from the land of Egypt to give us the land flowing with milk and honey, cling to us even today. For we did not heed the voice of the Lord our God in all the words of the prophets whom he sent us, but each one of us went off after, after the devices of his own wicked heart, served other gods, and did evil in the sight of the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. O God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the corpses of your servants as food to the birds of heaven, the flesh of your faithful ones to the beasts of the earth. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. They have poured out their blood like water round about Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury them. We have become the reproach of our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us. How lo Lord, how long? Will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to them, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will go down to the netherworld. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise it's really a miracle that we know anything about St. Therese. I've been to Lisieux. Uh, not to brag, uh, thanks be to God for uh, seminary formation. I got to go all over the place. And Lisieux is teeny tiny, a tiny little town, way off the beaten path. There's no other reason to go there unless you want to go visit uh, St. Therese. Her, her body, the Carmel doesn't really exist anymore, but you can go to her house. And I got to see her house. And I may or may not have picked roses in her backyard, and it's not my fault, I can't read French, and the signs that said, don't pick the flowers, are in French, and I can't read French. So, uh, Lisieux is a tiny little town, Therese had all these experiences interiorly, and thank God her prioress asked her to write them down for the world, and who would have known, she didn't know, and her prioress didn't know, that she would be a canonized saint a doctor of the church, one of the first female doctors of the church. There's less than 35 of those. And who knew that we'd be in Omaha, Nebraska, about 100 years later, talking about this young woman who died at 24. She was only 24 years old when she died of tuberculosis. We heard in our daily readings today all about those who have rejected the voice of the Lord and have not listened to the voice of the Lord, but we're celebrating today someone who did very much listen to the voice of the Lord. And one of the times that that happened very powerfully for her was after she entered the Carmel. And of course, uh, she was a very young woman when she entered the Carmel. Her mother had passed away when she was young, and right after she entered, I think, is when her father passed away. And so here she was in Carmel, in her hometown, by the way. Uh, she grew up in Lisieux, and that's where the, the Carmel was too. And she was just pondering. She's like, you know, here I am in the Carmel, and I know this is my vocation, but man, I want to be a martyr. And man, I want to be a missionary. And I want to go to the ends of the earth and preach the gospel to people who have never heard of Jesus. But I know that Jesus wants me here, and so what is my place in the church? So she said, I turned to the letters of St. Paul, and she stumbled upon the 12th and 13th chapters of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. And she read that in the church, there are many different members of the one body. And St. Paul goes on to say, you know, the, the eye can't be the hand, and the hand can't be the eye, but the eye needs the hand, and the hand needs the eye. And so we're all different members of the body of Christ. We all have our own functions to do. But then St. Paul even says, well, not everybody can be pastors and teachers and missionaries, etc. Not everybody can do all of those things. And so Therese asked, well, then what's, what's my role? And in fact, she had an interesting question. She asked, well, am I the hand or the eye or what body part am I in the, in the body of Christ, the church? And she realized, well, every body needs a heart. And she felt inspired as she thought of this. She's like, I think here in Carmel, I'm called to be the heart of the body, the church. 
And she wrote in, in one of her uh, diaries that she finally realized, my vocation is just to be love in the church. And she said, really, that's, that's every vocation. That's the priesthood. That's marriage. That's the consecrated life. That's missionaries. That's martyrs. It's all out of love. And if they didn't have love, there would be no martyrs. And there would be no missionaries. And there would be no marriage if there was no love. Her vocation was to be love. And all throughout the history of the church, as we hear in the readings today, there's many people who have chosen to be other things. But the good news today on the Feast of St. Therese is that there's another way. We don't have to be gossip in the midst of the church. We don't have to be panic. We don't have to be sadness in the heart of the church. We don't have to be sin. We don't have to be anxiety. We don't have to be fear in the heart of the church. We don't have to be unforgiveness or anger. We don't have to be distraction or lethargy or boredom. We can be love. And it happens as we come to the altar to be filled with love, with the grace that Therese received every single day at the Holy Mass. We come to the altar too to receive the body and blood of Jesus the sacrament of love, the sacrament of charity. Let's ask for the grace on this feast day to ourselves be love. Please stand as we offer our petitions to the Lord. For all the members of the church throughout the world, for the grace to become love in the heart of the church in our everyday activities and interactions, we pray to the Lord. For all who govern us throughout the world, that the Lord would give to our leaders a spirit of wisdom and courage to make the right decisions for the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the sick and the suffering, and for all who have asked for our prayers, may the Lord draw near to them in their need, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for more fervent vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially to the cloistered life, like St. Therese lived, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the repose of the soul of Connie McNary, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all who have died, may they soon see the Lord face to face in the company of all the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, hear us as we cry out to you in faith, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you. Fruits of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Be God. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders in St. Therese, O Lord, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits were pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, with Saint Therese, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Thus says the Lord, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven.
Let us pray. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord, kindle in us the force of that love with which St. Therese dedicated herself to you and longed to obtain your mercy for all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Praise Praise to God. God.